uh, operating systems. This is the third topic in uh, form one. So we start by looking at the definition. What is an operating system? An operating system is a set of programs that is used to manage the basic hardware resources of a computer. So basically when we talk about an operating system, this is the main program uh, that controls everything. That is the user applications, uh, user access, the interaction between hardware, uh, software, and the hardware. So basically, uh, an operating system is just the program. If you ask, just say it's the main program that enhances interaction between the user hardware and the software. Then, uh, when you talk about an operating system uh, platform, this is how the operating system interacts uh, with the application software, the hardware, and the user. So this diagram here, explains the interaction between the user. The user runs the application. The application sends requests or signals to the operating system. The operating system receives the signals or the controls or the application requests and then they sends it to the hardware for, for example, display. Something like now the screen, we've been in a position to show what has been uh, manipulated or operated by the operating system. Then, uh, on the other hand, um, it is important to look at the devices or resources under the control of the operating system. A computer is composed of a set of software control resources that enable movement, storage, and processing of data and information. As a resource manager, the operating system the operating system manages the following basic resources and devices. We have the processor, we have the main memory or the random access memory, we have the secondary storage devices, input output devices and their ports. We also have files and communication devices. So generally in an exam situation, if you are asked to name resources under the operating system or managed by the OS, uh, talk about the processor, don't forget about the memory, storage devices, uh, input output devices, communication devices and their ports, and also don't forget files. So on the other hand, we also need to see or look at functions of an operating system. So we have various functions that operating system does, for example, processor management. In processor management, uh, you will notice that a computer is capable of performing more than one task. That is called multitasking. That one is made possible by the help of uh, 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 operating system. So we say uh, multitask in multitasking, a computer can run several applications simultaneously. Uh, so what happens, the CPU is subdivided into slices and these slices are allocated each a task. Then we have the memory uh, allocation and loading of programs. Programs must be loaded into the memory before they can be executed and moved out of memory when they are no longer required. So uh, that is the, the purpose of the operating system, to ensure that programs are pushed into the memory for execution and once they are done, they are, are removed there to free the memory. Then we can also talk about input, output, devices, and port management. So every computer has many input, output devices. And also on the other hand, the OS also defines the various input and output ports found in the computer, e.g. the printer port. So it is very important for the OS to make sure that the input, output devices are, are well managed, they are well controlled to avoid conflicts whereby one gadget requires a resource, whereas it is being held by another one. So the operating system manages the input-output uh, devices. Then we have management of storage devices. The operating system manages the storage and retrieval of data on secondary devices. So guys, in this point, you're supposed to elaborate or explain the fact that the operating system is responsible for the storage, retrieval, and also the, uh, that is the transmission of that data from one gadget to the other. On the other hand, we have management of communication devices and ports. 
Communication refers to how various devices and programs in and out of the computer system send and receive messages from one another from the processor. So basically here we are talking about how gadget A or device A is able to communicate with gadget uh, B and uh, from the uh, the rook of things, the operating system now makes sure that the, these gadgets interact and they are ready to read and write uh, to their various devices. Then we have file management. Uh, the OS is concerned with the logical organization of the information, that is the file system. It is responsible for sorting uh, of retrieved data or shared data. It also means of protecting data files and programs against an authorized access and corruption. When we talk about file management, the operating system gives us uh, that touch of having that uh, you can assign a password or you can compress a file so that the file either saves on space or is saved from an authorized access or corruption. Then we have jobs uh, scheduling. The operating system arranges and roads programs in order to provide a continuous sequence of processing and also provide the appropriate response to events. The processor can handle only one task at a time. Therefore, in a situation where more than one application program is occupying the main storage, the OS has to determine which task will be processed first and ensure that uh, one, that one uh, uh, ensures that the one that is currently being processed is closely monitored to avoid wasting time. So here we are talking about a situation whereby there are several processes to be uh, or jobs to be processed, and the operating system works on priority. So which uh, process arrived first, and therefore it will operate in the situation of first in, first out. That whereby the, process, the, the job task that arrived earlier is processed, monitored, to avoid wastage of time. Then we have job uh, sequencing. The OS keeps a list of jobs or tasks currently being run and monitors them as they move in and out of the processor. It arranges them in a particular order to make it easy for the processor to execute them and to know how and when to fetch instructions and data for each task. So here, sequencing, we are, we are talking about arranging, that is arranging tasks so that they can be manipulated without wastage of time. Then we have resource control and allocation. The OS controls the selection of operation of hardware devices used for input, output and storage. It determines which task uses a particular resource and at what time. So, you see here, we are talking about the OS determining which task uses a particular resource at which time. This one is now uh, bringing us in terms of uh, time management. Then we have interrupt handling. When we talk about an interrupt, an interrupt is a break from normal processing of instruction. Uh, it is a break. An interrupt is a break. So, you get a situation whereby the operating system assigns each device a special number called IRQ or interrupt request number. This number uh, makes the operating system not to get confused when assigning resources. So if a certain gadget has been assigned number one, then the operating system knows that is the keyboard. When another one is assigned number two, that is the mouse. So the, the operating system works smoothly, just like in your school, where the, you are given different admission numbers, even if you have the same name, to make things easier for the administration. So, let's see. How do we classify operating systems? There are three parameters used to classify operating system. You classify operating system according to number of tasks, according to number of users, and also according to user interface or human computer interface. When you talk about operating system according to number of tasks, we have single tasking. These are programs that can only handle one task at any given time. We have multitasking. These are programs that can handle several tasks at any given time. Classification according to number of users, we classify them according to user, uh, that is single user and multi-user. 
Just like the saying goes, single user here, it is an operating system that can only have one single at any different time. Whereas multi-user is an operating system that handles more than one user at any given time. Classification according to human computer interface or according to user interface, we have command line interface, a menu driven interface, and a graphical user interface. Nowadays, um, the most used uh, interface is the GUI or the user, that is the that is, we talk about the graphical user interface. So let's look at the graphical user interface or the GUI. This is an interaction between the user and the computer which involves uh, use of icons, use of windows, and also uh, use of menus. So uh, when you compare graphical user interface with the command line or any other interface, this is the best interface because it is user friendly. So we usually have the acronym WIMP, W-I-M-P. W stands for windows. Windows are rectangular working area. Icons are small pictures that represent commands. Uh, menus refers to a list of commands. And pointing devices or P there stands for pointing devices. And these are devices like uh, mouse, uh, joystick such which help you to manipulate and be in a position to uh, work with the uh, graphical user interface. So I will talk about the types of user interfaces we have command line. Command line is where the user must cram, must know the commands and the system cannot operate if you don't type the commands manually. Whereas menu driven this means you choose menus from various uh, uh, tabs or ribbons. What are the features or characteristics of a user interface? It should be relatively easy for the user to try to start using them. The system should be self-contained so that the user is not forced into accessing manuals. The amount of effort and the information required for the user to get the system complete required tasks should be minimal. The system should be robust and reliable. The system should be able to adjust to different levels of expertise between users and also users grow into competence. The user should be made to feel in control of what is going on and lastly, the, uh, the user, sorry, the system should behave in a logic and consistent manner, enabling the user to reason about what is going on and apply what has been run. So guys, uh, remember you can get a copy of these notes from my website. The URL of my website is just down below this video. So if we go to menu driven guys, this type of interface provides the user with a list of programs or commands displayed on the screen to choose from and a simple means of selecting uh, between them. So there are two types of menus. We have pull-down menus and pop-up menus or pop-down menus. When you talk about pull-down menus, there are special types of menu used mostly in Windows. Pop-up menus, these are menus, uh, these menus are made to appear above or below an item. Like for example, when you right click, you get a, a pop-up menu. Then what are the factors to consider when choosing an operating system? The first one is hardware configuration. When you talk about hardware configuration, remember hardware, these are the physical and tangible parts of a computer. So hardware configuration, we are talking about the memory size, uh, the hardware, that is sorry, the hard disk size or capacity, type of processor, the model of the computer, whether it is uh, Macintosh or the others. Then we have a basic design of the computer that is um, if for example we can talk about the IBM or the IBM compatible or an Apple computer that is that for that case we are talking about basic design of the computer therefore this one the IBM uh, compatible uh, you get that the Apple computers may not probably have installed with the same operating system like the IBM 
This one can go for the Windows, the other one can go for OS, that is the Mac OS. Then we talk about com uh, hardware compatibility. Compatibility means the ability of a gadget to work with other gadgets. Like for example, you can use a Dell mouse in a, a Renovo computer, that is the compatibility. If your operating system supports compatibility, then that is the best. Then we have user needs. You can talk about uh, a normal person and a disabled person, like a bright person. You can just go for an operating system that can support uh, braille or other keyboards. But uh, for on the other hand, you can just, for example, consider somebody who uses uh, speakers to uh, uh, dictate to the machines, etc. Also consider user friendliness. Uh, there are some computers which only support command line, but others support other uh, like the GUI or like the menu driven. So it's upon you to know the level of your expertise and know which machine you go, you, you go for. Also look at availability in the market. Uh, don't go for a machine that is not readily available, especially if that is, you cannot get the spare parts. Then what are the goals for operating system organizing information? So, goals for OS organizing information a tree like structure. So, when you talk about the goals for OS organizing information, you must consider the ease of access, the ease of update, efficient storage, ease of maintenance, and reliability. When you talk about ease of access, this allows quick access to storage data. Ease of update allows ease of update, and the OS must be able to keep a record of the date of a file creation and modification. That is for the ease of update. Efficient storage. The OS should ensure that available space is well utilized. Ease of maintenance. This enables quick navigation through the file system and make it easy for it to be maintained. And lastly, reliability means the file and folder organization method must be reliable and consistent regardless of the device size. Then uh, we can just look or dash into a skeleton or a nutshell on Windows operating system. When you talk about a window, we have talked about a rectangular working area, and that's why we are talking about a window. You will notice that most Microsoft um, uh, uh, programs are rectangular in shape, that's why we refer them as Windows. Then we have examples of Windows operating system. We have Windows 95, Windows 98, all there. Until now, we have Windows 10 and others that are to come. Then we have other operating systems that are non-Microsoft. We have Linux, Unix, Mac OS, and OS Stroke 2. Uh, the last four are non-Microsoft operating systems. Then we can talk about a file as far as Windows are concerned. A file is a collection of related data given unique name for ease of access, manipulation, and storage on a secondary storage device. Like for example, if you open Microsoft Word and save a document, that is a file. So what are the characteristics of a file? A file must have a name, that is file name. It must have an extension. Later on, we shall look at the extension. Then a file must have a size, date created, and date modified. Guys, this can be asked in an exam. State the characteristics of a file. Then when we talk about file extensions, these are, the, these are features that are added at the end of a file to differentiate it. Remember you can have a file called uh, water.doc. That is Microsoft Word. You can have the same file called water.xlsx. That means that file is Microsoft Excel. When you create a file using Microsoft PowerPoint, it is given an extension PPTX or PPT for later versions, but uh, for the earlier versions. But for the new versions, we use PPTX. Then when we have .pub, that means it's a Microsoft Publisher file. .tiff, that is an image file, PNG, JPEG, PNG, those are image files. Executable files are given .exe, for example, setup.exe, 
batch files are given .bat. These are files that uh, contains commands during loading or uh, boot up. System files are given .sys. You can download these notes for more scrutiny. So let's go to uh, a bit of uh, uh, Windows 10. We can just try to see uh, a bit of Windows 10. So when I click on start here, you see this is the startup menu. This is the startup menu. It contains all the programs installed in this uh, computer. Down here, we have this part. This part down here. This part is called the taskbar. It is divided into three. Uh, this part, the rightmost corner is called the system tray or notification area. When I click on it, you can see programs running on the background. So this is the system tray. The, then the, at the your extreme left corner is the startup menu. The area or the space between the startup menu and the notification area is called the task manager. It is used to display all programs that are opened. On the other hand, you can proceed at this point. This is a window, and a window usually contains minimize button, a maximize, maximize button, and the cross button. So, on the other hand, it should also have the scroll bars here. These are called the scroll bars. And then we have the menus here. These are the menus or ribbons. You can refer them as ribbons. And every ribbon has a chunk or groupings. Like, for example, if I launch a word, if I launch Microsoft Word here, uh, if I launch Microsoft Word, you'll notice that um, uh, when I click on Home, tab i have clipboard group if i click the clip a clip group group it opens here when i go to page layout here i have the page setup group when i click on it this dialog box appears so when i go to reference we have the table of content uh, footnotes citations blah 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 so uh, for that case you can be in a position to see uh, these are windows they are all opening in uh, they are opening in a, that is in a rectangular uh, shape manner. We can also proceed to create a file. First of all, we start by creating something called a folder. So I right click, I go to new, then folder. I can just type the name I need, don't be shy. Then once I do that, I can double click the folder. If I create another folder, right click new folder. This one can be called Gichai. You see now, I have created if I click here, I have the folder and the subfolder. Then in the subfolder here, I can create a file by right clicking, going to new. Then I open the application of Microsoft Word. I can create a file called water. I can open another application, right click, new. I open publisher, can call this one. Uh, that is a success card. Success card. You see now, I have created two different files can also create another file file new i go to text file this one can also call the water that is an uh this is a, a notepad this is a text file this is a document file microsoft document this is microsoft publisher you can also create another in microsoft excel this can be called voters you see now these are files inside the inside the the folder on the other hand, when I click on this PC, you'll be in a position to see drives. If I include another drive, it will be labeled here. So we usually label drives A, B for floppy disket, then C for the local disk, D for the removable, etc. Unfortunately, my laptop doesn't have a CD writer, otherwise it would have been uh, displayed here. So guys, we have other things that um, probably uh, you need to uh, know, like for example, uh, we usually have uh, disk, that is uh, disk management tasks that I have not uh, uh, covered here, but I just cover them uh, verbally. We have disk management, uh, disk management tasks that, uh, that are done by the OS. So we have disk management tasks, like for example, we have disk formatting and disk 
formatting we have disk formatting we have disk uh, cleanup we have disk scanning we have disk compression we also have disk defragmentation so uh, the OS the operating system performs an action called disk defragmentation disk defragmentation is bringing together scattered files to increase or save on disk space so the purpose of disk defragmentation is to increase the disk space then we also have disk partitioning uh, disk partitioning disk partitioning disk partitioning refers to dividing a disk into more than one portion so that you can in, you can install more than one operating system and also you can use the next portion for backups then disk compression is not so much different from disk defragmentation it is actually arranging files in that you increase or you save on disk space then we have the next uh, uh, the next terminology here we have the disk scanning disk scanning is identifying errors in a disk this one is performed by the operating system it checks errors and fixes them if they are unable to be fixed then you can change the hard disk you also have disk cleanup windows has a feature that automatically cleans deletes unwanted icons or files from your machine to increase your space you always get disk screen, uh, disk cleanup wizard whenever you have so many files that are not used and lastly we have disk formatting when you buy a new disk or a disk a flash disk or a cd relatable you need it to insert it into the drive and run formatting formatting is preparing a new robot disk to hold data so guys uh, that is the presentation my presentation on operating system uh, remember to subscribe remember to share my files with your friends and also remember to comment Thank you very much.